ancient travellers left behind their golden travel accounts in the form of travelogues for the future generations to read, learn and delight. We bring those to you in our audio series, Travelogues in Time. Today we have for you the second part of the travel accounts of Nicola Manushi, the Venetian traveller from Italy. The script is by Professor Pius Malikandathil and presented by Abhay Rajdath. In the first part, we had dealt upon the arrival of Manushi to India, his book, The History of Mughals, his association with Dara Shikho, information about Mughal politics and succession war. Over to Abhay Rajdath for the second part. In the second volume, Manucci speaks of a variety of themes ranging from the various measures that Aurangzeb had taken against wine drinking, use of bhang, music, dancing, etc., to aspects of disputes between Aurangzeb and his imprisoned father, Shah Jahan, details on the death and burial of Shah Jahan, Mir Jumla's attack on Assam, and the activities of the Jesuits in Agra. Manucci also says how earnestly Aurangzeb desired to have a naval fleet with considerable number of ships to cleanse the sea space of pirates and to make himself powerful at sea, although this project was later dropped. When there was increasing persuasion on Manucci from Mughal officials to join the service of Aurangzeb on any terms he would demand, we find him making a trip to Allahabad, from where he moved further to Banaras, Patna, Rajmahal, Dhaka, Sundarbans, Hooghly and Qasim Bazar, which enabled him to incorporate information about these terrains in his narrative. He refers to the high quality peace goods and white cloth being made as Qasim Bazar. Manuchi soon returned to Agra where he took up the job of a medical doctor. For the first time, the governor of Agra who suffered from Fistula invited him to see whether he could cure him as other Europeans in the city were not aware of the proper treatment for it. He got considerable amount of money and gifts for curing him and slowly he was turning himself into a physician attending to the health care needs of many including the women of royal harem. He also mentions the way how he and a young Armenian saved a lady from performing sati whom the Armenian later married. Aurangzeb appointed Raja Jaisingh the governor of Deccan in 1664 and handed over to him the mission to suppress Shivaji. Raja Jaisingh, who knew Manuchi for a considerable time, asked him to take up the job of commander of his artillery on 10 rupees a day and to ensure the support as many Europeans as possible for the military venture. Manuchi marched with him to Deccan and on the way he was deputed by Jaisingh to negotiate with some local chieftains north of Bombay. He returned to Aurangabad after seven months. Manuchi refers to the surrendering of Sivaji to Jaisingh by mid-1665 and the interactions the author had with Sivaji. The author later participated also in the military move that Raja Jaisingh took against Bijapur. Manuchi, eventually being tired of this job, asked Jai Singh for leave to resign from his service. Then he went straight to the Portuguese enclaves of Kambay near Kalyan and then proceeded to Bhivandi, then controlled by Sivaji on his way to Basin, Vesai. On reaching Basin, Manuchi was interrogated by the commissionary of the Inquisition in 1666 as to see whether he was following Catholic teachings and to see his position on morality and faith. He also refers to the death of Raja Jai Singh at Burhanpur, which according to the author was due to poison administered to him on the way at Aurangzeb's order, as he suspected that the flight of Shivaji was manipulated by Jai Singh. Later, even the death of Roshan Ara Begum is also attributed by the author to the administration of poison by Aurangzeb for her alleged immoral behavior. In May 1667, Manuchi reached Goa, where he advised the Portuguese viceroy not to allow the Mughals to become master of Bijapur, as they would then capture Goa as well. Manuchi refers to 
cholera which was one of the most dreadful sicknesses in Goa and also to the mangoes of Nicola Afonso which were the best ones that were available in Goa. After having spent 15 months in Goa, Manucci left the city disguised as a Carmelite monk and went to Bijapur with the intention of going to Delhi. He speaks of the threat he and his servant boy had on the way from the robbers. He travelled via Perenda, Aurangabad, Bhuranpur, Agra and reached Delhi where he met Kirat Singh, the son of Raja Jai Singh. Kirat gave Manuchi robes, two horses and five rupees every day. When Kirat was sent to Lahore by the emperor, Manuchi accompanied him and started the profession of a physician as there was no European doctor in that city. Styling himself as Farangi doctor, he soon established his name in the city of Lahore and even the governor of Lahore wanted to take him in his service. Though he gently refused it, we find him taking the physician's job seriously, no much so that he even treated and healed the daughter of Murad Baksh. After having spent seven years as a doctor and established a name in matters of medical care, he decided to go to any of the enclaves controlled by the Europeans. You have just heard the second part of the travel accounts of Nicola Manushi, the Venetian traveller from Italy. Travelogues in time. Travelogues in time.